Howdy howdy horror fanatics and welcome to Scream with me. My name is Rusty and on my channel I like to talk about my favorite movies and just discuss what I like about them um, and uh, get anybody else's opinion. Um, I'm kind of really excited to talk about this movie tonight. Um, this is continuing my series where I doing the new I Spell on Your Grave movies. Now, the reason I'm so excited about this movie tonight is that very, very rarely does, I mean, I'm so old, I've uh, been a horror fan since I was a teenager, and very rarely does um, a movie unseat one of me top five, and this one did. And that's why I'm so excited to talk about it. Um, my last video I did the remake of I Spit on Your Grave and tonight I'm going to do I Spit on Your Grave 2. Uh, this is the second remake. It was released in 2013 and it stars Gemma Dallinger, Joe Absalom, and Yavor Baharovov. Baharov? There you go. Yavor Baharov. I have to get into my Russian thinking, because, uh, uh, or actually, what was it? Where did she end up? Anyway. Uh, yeah, it was. It was Bulgaria. Yeah, is that where she ends up? But, anyway. So, I spit on your grave to the unrated version in my triple pack. This is a very good triple pack, like I discussed in my last video. Um, this movie is now, that's what I meant by unseating. This movie is one of the best, it, it jumped into the top five. Um, it is definitely one of my top five vengeance horror movies ever in my life. And that's why I meant about it being a very rare occurrence for something to jump up into my top five. Um, but this one did it. Now, uh, I Spit on Your Grave 2 is um, a standalone movie. It does not follow the storyline of the first one. It's a standalone movie. It stars a different lady. And I... I think I was blown away within about 15 minutes. Now it's directed by the same guy who did the first one, which had me worried at first because if you watch me of a video, you will see my thoughts on it. So I didn't have a lot of high hopes for this movie. And then I guess probably within 20 minutes of this movie, I'm like, okay, this is, <laughs> this is uh, quite a bit different. Uh, this it sucked me in like you wouldn't believe so we have the star and uh, she's an actress in New York and she is you know struggling so she don't have a lot of money and uh, she needs portfolio you know she's a model so she needs to, uh, or, and an actress so she needs a portfolio so uh, these guys like you know offer to you know take, take her portfolio for her for a cheap price so she was a little concerned at first but it sounded like all right you know she was looking for places to get a portfolio done so she goes to these guys and has a portfolio made they do kind of act a little weird wanting her to take off her top and stuff and she's like no thank you so she gets a little upset and she leaves and um later on when she gets back home, later on, one of the guys, a weird guy, he, he did act a little strange, but he shows up at her apartment with a thumbnail drive and said, hey, you know, I'm going to give these to you. I'm sorry about what happened with me brothers, because they're supposedly three brothers. So she, she, you know, he's like, I'll give that, you know, I'll just give it to you for free and in a, as an apology for how you were kind of like mistreated. So she lets him in and um, she accepts it and then the next thing you know here it comes he brutally attacks her 
Ripsa. Oh, I don't think I'm supposed to say that word on YouTube. Uh, but I always call it ARPS. He ARPS her. And um, it is as bad as the original. Um, it's, it's bad. It's as bad as the original one. You want to, we talked about breaking my moral compass. Uh, this one did it. <laughs> so not only does he arp her, and um, but her friend from next door, this guy, he like hears the commotion, which I thought was interesting. You know that somebody actually came to help. So he comes in, and it makes it all the more horrible because he comes in to help her, and when he does, he doesn't see the guy behind the door. And he is attacked and brutally stabbed, where he then falls on the floor, still alive, but, you know, mortally wounded, but he's still alive. And he has to actually lay there and bleed out and bleed to death while she is, again, completely and totally arced by this assailant. And he's basically, she's basically watching his eyes as he dies while he's watching her get brutalized so when it's all over he's dead the assailant um, why he didn't like kill her right off the bat I don't know but he calls his brothers and his brothers come and it's like oh my gosh you know like you're so stupid what have you done now and you think they're gonna kill her and they drug her up with that horse tranquilizer I forgot what it's called um, ketamine or something like that. I think that's what it's called. But they drug her up. They put her in a suitcase, like a chest. And you're like, okay, they're going to like take her and kill her and dispose of the body. How much, you know, how worse is this going to get? Um, it's I spit on your grave, so you never know. But uh, considering the first one was kind of tame uh, uh, in that aspect. Um, but it had already been so bad. You know, it, it was like really bad and I can't believe how it continued. I would say that in the end this movie was even worse than the original, The Assault because The Assault is so long and drawn out and repetitive so she gets put in this chest and you're with her, right? You're with her in the movie so from her point of view so you're you know, thinking, well, they're going to take them back to their place and probably continue. And um, that is what looks like happens. She gets dumped out in, a, in like a basement. And you're like, okay. So then a bunch of really nice, really cool, um, I don't mean nice and cool as in it's a, a good thing. I just mean really well filmed attack upon her. And you're really mentally blown away by this movie. I was. And uh, so she gets loose and you've like rooted for her. And that was really good, you know, that they made me root for her so much. And when she like was smart enough to get away from them and she climbs out a window and she's running down the street. And, um, you know, she's running down the street and... The way they filmed it was so perfect because you start noticing about the same time that she starts noticing something's wrong here. And about the time she notices it, I started noticing it. I'm like, what's the writing on the walls? You know, the signs, like the street signs and the store, the store buildings. That doesn't, that doesn't look, that's not English. You know, what, what? what the hell is going on and so about the time she you know a, a cop like pulls up and she gets into the car and I noticed that the first thing it said was like police here on on the side and I'm like okay we're in Europe somewhere what the fuck <laughs> wait hold up hold up hold up <laughs> so you know she's trying to talk to him and he's like you know do you do you know where you are and and She's like, what do you mean? Where am I? You know, and that's when he advises her that she and now you, the, the viewer, you're in like Bulgaria. What the fuck? How? So she was, um, 
So during all that bumping and carrying on in the chest, you didn't realize how much time had passed, but she had been smuggled out of New York. I guess that's the sex trafficking thing. She had been smuggled out of New York into this foreign country and was being brutally, you know, arped and stuff and assaulted in the basement. Um, and now you're, you wake up and you're in a different country. That twist just nearly flipped me out the chair. You know, I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> Come on. That was excellent. That was excellent. So she gets to the police station, and he tries to, like, understand what's going on because, you know, who is this American that's just like it? What? You know? And a uh, social worker shows up. Uh, she's very nice, very sweet. Oh, my God, what's happened to you? Let me take you to the American embassy. So she takes the girl to the American embassy where the girl can, like, go back home or something. And then as you're driving along, though, I started getting, like, this really weird feeling. Because the movie can't be over yet. So I get this really weird feeling, and the woman is like, let me just stop by the house and get you some clothes and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on now? And the woman, she goes into the house with the lady, and the lady, like, leads her down these stairs. And I'm like, come on. No, really? And sure enough, when she opens the door and the, she pushes the girl through, she's right back in the basement that she had escaped from. This woman is the mother of the assaulter and the other two guys. Um, she's part of it, and she had gotten her out of the police station. So... Yeah, so here we go. She is brutally attacked even more, over and over. She is then supposedly killed. They, they make her watch as they dig a big hole, put the chest in, and you're thinking as a viewer, well, this is it. I mean, how are you going to get out of this situation? You're buried now. So they switch the point of view to inside the chest and you're really wondering how in the hell are you going to get out of this? This is, I'm stumped. <laughs> uh, then all of a sudden there's like, you, you know, there's this shaking and you know, she's banging around in the chest and all of a sudden the chest like falls into the sewer system underneath the city so then you think okay wait when the guy was digging the hole and they asked him if it was deep enough he said I've hit I've dug all the way down and hit stone so that's what that meant was that he had dug all the way down and hit the roof of the sewer system so the, the chest goes through it lands in the sewer system and busts open and she gets out and she's that's how she escapes. So she finds her way out of the sewer system and here comes the revenge aspect. She, you know, she doesn't go for help after what just happened, would you? She uh, realizes logistically where she's at in relation to the house and she starts stalking these guys and this woman to get them. And, oh, wow. <laughs> you see me have to grab myself because the kills in this movie are absolutely phenomenal. They're just phenomenal. She is really angry. <laughs> Which, um, there was no problem like the first remake. There was no problem at all in breaking your moral compass. The stuff that she did to these guys was phenomenally bad. And yet, you enjoy every minute of it because they all three participated. Um, they deserved exactly what they got. And it was ironic. You know, the kills were 
kind of ironic like the first movie um, when one of them she chains to a wall cuts him up and then smears sewage on him so that he will get botulism or, or whatever that is a staph infection she smears sewage in the wounds and uh, just lets him sit there hang there while she takes care of the other guys and um, the last guy that she gets I'm trying to think of how to say it she had earlier when they were putting her in the box to bury her the guy had said something about how oh well we all have our vices you know what I mean so when she 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 gets she leads him down there he sees his brother hanging on the wall she knocks him out and he wakes up and this was like really funny in a personal way because I couldn't really tell what was going on the the cinematography the way that they had it filmed I couldn't really tell what was going on and I'm like what what is this well you know what he's on a table okay yeah but I mean what it I actually had to like get reading glasses and get up next to the monitor so that I could like see what is what what is it and then as they zoomed in she has him naked on a table with his testicles in a vice yeah he's like on you know and when she started you know when when he woke up and she started like going hi 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 let's go you know we're gonna see what you're gonna you know how do you feel you know in the situation that you're in and he starts screaming at her and she's like oh well you know you have your vices this is mine and she has his testicles in the in the thing and she begins to twist them and twist them and if you're a guy with every twist yeah <laughs> I swear I started feeling every twist and um, she twists them until they actually pop out across the room that was just excellent I mean they didn't go overboard with anything but they definitely gave you all you needed to see she had also now she also got the woman and she had her down there and put her in the chest that she was in and um, made her look at her son because you know it didn't take but 24 hours for those wounds on him to become swollen and infected uh, when you put raw sewage and open wounds, you know what I mean? So it was like wow The original cop there's other stuff of course that has taken place the original cop finds them um, and uh, Right when she got through squeezing that guy's balls across the room um, She find he you know he finds them right at that point and he's like, you know, don't do anything else so the guy though jumps up from the table and starts choking her and the cop shoots him and um, then he lets her go after you know because he's figured it out too there was other stuff going on in the movie in which this cop has now figured out what was going on and he even goes over to the chest where the woman is and it's like you know she's probably going to go to prison you know for the rest of her life um, so she gets turned over to the cop and the cop lets that girl go and the movie ends with her walking through the gates of the American Embassy now I left out stuff you know but that's the gist of everything and I will say that that movie the, the it was filmed perfectly the story was new and perfect to me it kept me on the edge of my seat the kills were phenomenal uh, there was no problem with my moral compass in this movie what they did to her was just as bad as the first movie and deserving of everything she gave them and so this movie was very very satisfying to me um, it satisfied everything about it to me.
and it is now one of the top five. It's right up there with Death Wish, The Brave One, Revenge, Death Sentence. It's right up there in my top five horror movies, uh, I mean, uh, vengeance movies of all time, is I Spit on Your Grave 2. The third one, I'll talk about in the next video, um, but this movie right here, I've already seen it like five times. It is absolutely phenomenal. It has all the ingredients uh, for a fan of this kind of stuff. And, and I really don't consider this gore porn or torture porn at all um, because of the circumstances involved. And uh, yeah, I absolutely love it. If you don't have this set, get it just for this movie if you want to. The other two are all right. Uh, but just get it that for this movie it is the most phenomenal uh, vengeance movie that you're going to see in a long time uh, the acting was wonderful cinematography was wonderful the twist was like right out of Kill Bill or um, Pulp Fiction in my opinion you know because I have never been so freaked out in a movie as when she got out that window and you were so happy for her and the next thing you know, she's running down a street in a foreign country when she lives in New York, and you thought that's where it was. That blew my mind, and that was, like, phenomenal to blow my mind that way. So I, can't, I cannot praise this movie enough. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave too. totally unexpected it to be that good and to you know, turn out to be what it was, but it is definitely way up there on my list, so, yeah, I Spit on Your Grave 2, 2013, the remake, it's a standalone movie, has nothing to do with the storyline of the others, and it is phenomenal, if you get a chance to get it, go right ahead, and don't feel a bit guilty about it, because you will love this if you like Vengeance movies. Okay. Before I go, I was going to like show off a couple of my, uh, the last week or so, a couple of my little acquisitions. I know people do that on their videos, so I was going to do mine. Um, I've never had still books before. I've just never bothered with it. I've got 1,500 movies, but I've never really bothered with it. I got the Psycho still book. And the first one I had gotten last week was the Pitch Black still book. It's not cool. I got the pitch black unrated version still book and I just had never paid attention to still books you know and I'm like wow it's actually still. <laughs> so I thought that was funny and um, that I had never bothered with still books before as a collector but uh, and then Psycho I thought that was just really cool so I got them. So, you know, I'll pick up still books now if I find one of a movie that I want. I'm not just buying still books for the hell of it. But uh, let's see some other stuff. Um, I've seen a lot of talk about Frozen, where they're stuck in the ski lift. So I wanted to see that. Um, this is a movie called The Lodges, which is supposed to be like. Uh, Soldiers of War and The Others with Nicole Kidman. Uh, it's that kind of movie, so I'm like really excited for that. Omen Meets Rosemary's Baby, and it's called The Calling. I'm like really excited to see that. I found an Eliza Dushku movie that I did not know about called Open Graves. I'll be doing video on that, I'm sure. An uh, older Nicolas Cage movie called Drive Angry, the Blu-ray. So that's a few of the movies. The Disappearance of Alice Creed. Um, God, there's 150 movies sitting right there that I need to watch. And I just keep buying more without watching the ones I already have. And that's the problem with being a movie collector is you do that shit for some reason. But when I get the time, I'll have something to watch. It's like right now, I'm watching Prime Suspect, the uh, Helen Mirren British crime show. 
because I have to watch it at least once every two months. I watch the whole six movie episode, uh, series, and um, uh, instead of watching movies I need to watch, I'm going back to something that I have to watch once every two months at least. Uh, Prime Suspect and Cracker and Wire in the Blood is my three favorite crime shows. Um, and I always have to go back and watch the whole series of those every few months. But this is getting too long, so um, I'll be back with the third movie. Um, I Spit on Your Grave 2, absolutely phenomenal. And that's my judgment on it. And I will see y'all in just a little bit.